Hello and welcome back. Now, for those that aren't aware, I've been conducting tests on the Synology 918 Plus to test lots of things to do with SHR and RAID and stuff like that. And at the moment, I'm in the middle of testing their uh, consistent abilities to add a drive to their RAID. In the case of the RAID 1, I'm converting it into a RAID 5 by adding a drive. And in the case of the SHR, I'm adding a drive so it's still an SHR. Now, this is going to take a great deal of time, as you can see from the uh, checks that are happening there in the background and the percentage figure. But while I had them both here on the table, what I thought it would be worth doing is seeing how both devices deal with the dip in performance during the adding of a drive because so many of you the one of the reasons you go for raid isn't just that you've got a fallback position in case one of your drives fails but also because of the promise from Synology and QNAP and all those NAS brands that during a raid rebuild your data should still be accessible albeit with a reduced read and write speed so what I'm going to do is while I've got both of these devices here with all of the files that we chucked on them from the previous videos I'm going to copy and make duplicates of a big pile of these files to see what the performance dip is on both of them during an SHR rebuilding and convert a RAID 1 to a RAID 5. So we're going to make sure this is nice and fair between these two devices. So we're just going to use those top um, seven folders on both of these devices. On both of them, I'm going to copy. So remember, these copy actions are taking place um, individually within their own OS. So don't worry, this isn't like pressing copy on the usual PC. These are just copied within their own devices. And on both of them, I've created a folder called testing three. And on both of these devices, what we're gonna do, and that's still the clock running from earlier on, showing um, the RAID rebuild. So we're gonna leave that clock there in the background. As you can see, it's taken 20 minutes and we've not hit a percent on that, but that's one for the other video. And here, what I'm going to do is start that paste and that duplication of those files and folders that we've done so far to see which one of these two devices can do it quicker during the RAID reconfiguration. So straight away, paste overwrite, paste overwrite. So you know, one second difference between them. And we're going to see these two devices, which one is going to complete this copy action first with all of this stuff happening in the background. Unsurprisingly, um, there is a delay because obviously both of them are going to be working pretty hard. It might help with both of them if we keep their performance monitors on screen. So we'll put that there. So on both of them, you can see the speed that it's going to be achieving internally and how long it's going to take. Now, an initial glance does seem to indicate that the SHR, although taking an early lead, has hit a stumbling block, a block pretty early on. Um, we're just copying these files now and we're going to send these over just to see what it does with that 40 gig of files we've sent and which one is going to be completed first because this is an important factor to a number of you out there. A lot of you, you know, the, the RAID re rebuild and its impact on your day-to-day -day life is important because these drives have only got a few hundred gig of data on them. But if you've got terabytes of data, the speed and the transition of files that are being accessed by you, your staff, your clients is going to be very important indeed. So let's see which one of them completes first. Well, I think it's pretty clear early on that the SHR read and write during that uh, reconfiguration of the RAID definitely supported better read and write speeds overall. The first device there is kind of stalled out there. It's not really moving forward much more. It is saying that the read and write operations are still taking place, but there's just no denying it that it definitely transferred a great deal quicker on that SHR. Um, now, we are going to stop this video here because we're still going to let these two devices complete 
the uh, RAID reconfiguration that we've set up for the other video. No doubt that's already been published, who knows. Um, but still, nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. I hope we've learned something new from this, and I'll continue the testing on the differences between SHR and RAID, and hopefully move on to BTRFS versus EXT4 soon. Do check out the follow-up video regarding um, that RAID reconfiguration, and when we do some of the speed tests on that. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.